Let's, let's get more on that latest Fed chatter. We've got Casper Wolski standing by from Fig Securities now. Casper, great to see you over there. What did you make of that Fed chatter overnight? We seem to have uh, one every which way. That's right. Um, good morning there. Uh, yeah, we're, we're seeing the Fed come out uh, with a lot of, lot of hawkish data, talking up this prospect of a, of a rate hike uh, by the end of the year. Uh, interestingly, though, um, Daniel Talaro, uh, Fed governor last night, uh, talking down the idea, and, and probably he's, he's in the minority at the Fed at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the members there are uh, leaning towards uh, toward the hawkish side and, and this idea of a rate hike. Um, but it's interesting to see, you know, markets aren't really buying into, into what the Fed is saying. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's a whole lot of data out in the United States tonight. It's a really big drop, actually. Most notably, uh, we've got some inflation numbers as well. What are you expecting? And do you think this could be a tipping point as to whether or not they go in December? Yeah, that's right. We've got inflation uh, later out this week, um, but it's otherwise it's also a big data week. We've got, um, you know, we've got... Uh, you PPI, the beige mm -hmm. book out. Uh, there's a lot to look forward to. Um, and I think, you know, if you're looking at what the Fed's doing, I think it's pretty easy to expect them to continue to talk up this idea of a, of a rate hike, regardless of how that data looks. Uh, we saw them do that with the, with the weak employment data that came out the, the week before last. Um, you know, pretty, pretty dismal figures there, um, but they didn't really pay much acknowledgement to it and, and continue to talk up this idea of a, of a rate hike. So it's, they've probably lost a little bit of credibility with the market and the markets are now purely looking at, at what data comes out um, to guide them as to, as to what the Fed is going to do later this year. And, and that's really feeding into, uh, into volatility as, as the Fed isn't really able to, to guide these market expectations at the moment. What was the action like in the bond markets overnight? Uh, well, we saw uh, generally as a, as a risk off session, we saw um, uh, US Treasuries uh, returning to market. They had a day off on, on the back of the Columbus Day holiday on Monday, um, so they had a bit to catch up on. And, and we, we saw that, that weak trade data out of China yesterday, um, which, which drove up uh, the safe haven bid with, with US Treasury yields uh, down about five basis points, uh, now hovering just over 2%. And quite a lot of volatility of late, particularly in fixed income. What's been driving that? Yeah, um, I think it, it comes back to that point I, I mentioned about the, the Fed sort of losing their ability to mark, guide market expectations. Um, but at the same time, we've got this two-speed global economy at the moment. Uh, the, the, the US trying to get off this zero interest rate policy stance. Um, but the rest of the world really struggling for growth, struggling for inflation and, and talking up the idea of, of further stimulus. So there's a few opposing factors there. Um, and markets kind of irrational on the back of it. Uh, when we see bad economic data, um, uh, we're seeing risk actually rally in the hopes of further stimulus, um, but at the same time, that uncertainty and volatility is, is, is picking up the bid for safe haven bids. So, you know, if you're looking at short-term yields in the US, they're actually tr some of them are actually trading in negative territory. So, a few, a few opposing factors, and and in light of the low 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 interest rate environment, we're actually seeing costs for corporate issuers to come to market and, and raise funds uh, increase. So you're seeing corporate issuance drop off and, and that's really having an impact on real investment in the economy. Um, you know, so a lot of volatility and I think it's going to stay that way until we, until we see this eventual Fed rate hike. All right, and back to our own central bank, we've seen markets pricing in that Fed hike well into next year. Does that bring forward the idea of an RBA cut? Yeah, I think it does. Uh, we've, we've seen this, you know, this realignment of expectations for the Fed rate hike into next year, and and that's that's spread a lot of risk on activity, which is which has propped up our our currency over the last couple of weeks. And I think we might be getting to this point where the RBA starts to expressly view that as being too high, and it might put that RBA rate cuts uh, back on the table. Uh, we've we've also got some some data to look out for this week. Um, domestic employment uh, out tomorrow, but we've also got uh, CPI out of China today. So important data for the RBA to, to look out for, and I think uh, it's probably going to realign market expectations for, for a rate cut. All right. Casper, thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you. Casper Wolski there from Fig Security.